Hi team, welcome to Cloud Pandit in this Microsoft Fabric Master Program. In today's session, we will talk about how to copy data from REST API which sends response in pages. Okay, so normally what happens when you have a REST API, uh, you have pages as well, right? So most of the REST APIs which send the response in the pages. Let's say if you ask to extract the data from the page one, it will extract the whatever data, whatever user data you have in the page one, it will extract. If you pass the page ID two, it will extract whatever user data we have in the page ID two. So let's understand how to pass these page IDs dynamically from the data pipeline. And yesterday we have seen how to log in dynamically by taking the latest token because the token will be expired for every 15, 20 minutes due to the security reasons in the real time. So how we can able to take the latest token and how we can able to fetch the data dynamically from the pass the page ID. Let's say if I pass a page ID five, it has to fetch the data from the page ID five. If I pass a page ID from one to 10, it has to fetch the data from page ID one. Once it has extracted from page ID one, next it has to extract data from page ID two. Next it has to extract from page ID three and so on up to 10 because I want to extract data from page ID one to 10. Let's see how you can able to do for this. You, as you are already aware, we need to make the REST API URL ready. For that first, we need to install Postman. We already discussed. We need to register. We already discussed. We have to log in. Yes, we already discussed, but I'll show you one second how to log in. Once we log in, I'll also show you how you can able to get the user data by pages. Let's see these two things within the Postman now. So if I if you go to Postman here, what is the REST API URL that we are using? This is the one. Okay, in our previous session, we have seen this is the login URL that we have seen. Okay, to login, right? So, this is the login URL we are using to login. Just click on the new request. Let's put here this uh, login URL and this uses a post method. Just use the post method and this required the username, email, and password. It is like username and password. So, I am just copying our earlier logged in uh, earlier registered username and password so this i need to pass it at the body ra here i need to pass so these are the email and password with this we have registered so that's why i'm using same email and password for logging into this rest api send it why you are sending this because we want to take the latest token okay we want to take uh, we want to take the latest token which will be used for uh, some of the things but anyhow we will be taking the latest token from pipeline every time to read the data from rest api but let it be okay so because for testing and all i want to show you at the time of pipeline development i want to show you some data previews and all that's why i'm using this token now the second step is let's try to get the user data in the page pages so now if you look at here what is the value that we have just to say new here I'm just pasting this and this is a page ID one. Next I can view page ID two. Next I can view page ID three. This I want to pass it dynamically. Let's say page ID one. So automatically at parameters, page one is passed and it uses a method get. If you see, it uses a method get. Get users will get use a method called get. And this particular get uses a REST API required a authorization. What type of authorization? Barrier token. So I'll go to authorization. I'll select a barrier token. Then I'll pass this particular uh, authorization token. So authorization, this is the key. We need to put it here. Then we need to use this barrier. Okay, let's use this barrier. And then we can able to pass the token that we have extracted very recently. Okay, this is the token that I am passing here. Now I am getting the data from page one. This is the data from the first page. Okay. Next, if you want this from second page, you can also see metadata. It says this is a page one response. Within this page, we have a 10 records per each page. Total records is 36,217. Total pages that we have is 3622. So, like this, you can give page two. Maybe it is saying 3622. You want to query 3620. Yes, you can go and query that particular record. It will give you the 
respective user data from that particular page like this i want to iterate from page id 1 to 10 and i want to get it dynamically i want to iterate it tomorrow if you have given a range of 100 to 200 or 1000 to 2000 or 1 to 4000 so all these pages will be iterated and it will extract the data from all these pages so let's see this particular implementation in the data pipeline for that so now i'll go to lay, uh, fabric i'll create a lake house then i'll implement a pipeline which takes pages dynamically how you can pass the pages dynamically is we need to create a one parameter using that particular parameter we are going to pass it so let me show you how you can able to do that so you can just uh, what you can do is you can come here go to fabric just go to data factory let's go to uh, my workspace in my workspace click on this click on lake house so you can create cloud funded sync lake house 001 create it once the cloud pandit sync lake house 001 is created so then we want to go yeah so maybe you can just go back to lake house let's create a one output folder here i just created output folder in this folder i want to load the data as of now there is no content let's go back to my workspace create a data pipeline this is for pl for data ingestion by page by page by each page by page we are going to ingest the data so i have created a pipeline in this pipeline as we discussed earlier so the first important thing is maybe i can show you uh, from very scratch let's add the copy activity so maybe i am not going from step by step so first i am showing you copy activity so let's go to copy activity so if you look at the copy activity it is the external source let's click new what is the source team a rest api okay and here i need to put the page so as i mentioned here what i want is i don't want to keep entire thing here i don't want to keep entire thing here this question mark page equal to this particular part i want to pass it through the parameters okay i want to pass it through the parameters that's why i just removed that particular part i want to create a new connection this connection name i'll say ls for a rest api rest api connection is it anonymous no we have the basic authentication what is the username cloud pandit 53 at the rate gmail.com and password is cloud at the rate one two three click create okay so now we have created a linked service for this and you can test the connection so connection is successful so now as we don't have any data sets here we can pass the parameter values directly. It is not like Azure Data Factory or Synapse wherein we need to create a data set parameter, but here kind of data set parameter, but it is not really a parameter. Directly, I can use here, I can use here that particular value, whatever I have this I'll remove, right? Question mark page equal to I can put it so that this particular URL will be appended with that. So if you look at this. So this is the total URL. In this, in this, I am passing to user in the linked service and page equal to one question mark page equal to one. I am passing through a relative URL. When you pass it through relative URL, this will be just these two will be joined like this. Now what I want page, I, I want to uh, like pass a dynamic page value. How to pass that dynamic value? I'll tell you. Okay, just give a minute. To do that what we can do is we can add a here for each activity we can just use a for each activity so within this for each activity so for each activity has a lot of capabilities one of the capabilities add dynamic content we can use a function called a range what that range does you can see here so what range does is if you are given range 3 comma 4 means from 3 it will start from 3 it will generate the next to 4 values 3 four five six okay those are the four values it will start from three it will generate the next four values if i given a range of one and i want to generate next to ten values it will generate one two three four five till ten numbers so this range function i want to give it to the for each 
so that for each will give me id 1 next to 2 3 4 5 6 till 10 so these page values 1 2 3 everything i want to okay i want to pass the page ids to this copy activity okay so that's why what i'll do i'll cut this copy activity i'll keep it inside the for each i'll keep inside the for each now what happens it is very simple for us it is very simple for us we can simply we can simply pass this particular page equal to one page equal to two these numbers maybe first one next to two next to three everything i can pass it simply using the for each okay i can use the item now this question mark page equal to this item will pass the one two three and so on those values both i want to concatenate that's why i'll use a function called concatenate to concatenate so item should not keep it in a single quotes because this is a simple string value text value i am putting in a single quotes but this is a dynamic formula which gives the first one next to two next to three up to ten so now it will become page equal to one page equal to two page equal to three page equal to four and so on it is going to be now this particular uh rest api i can't able to uh, read any data isn't it because if you just preview data you can't able to fetch the data so the reason is we need a token we need a token how to get that token again go outside go outside here i want to use a activity called web activity just you can able to click on this okay and you i can just connect like this so this web activity i will be configuring okay this web activity i'll just configure i need to create another linker service because it is pointing to the user data but i need to point to the login click new again because it should be a new connection now i need to give the login url here i need to give the login url just give this login url here okay and this you can say ls for web okay ls for login and you can put it as an anonymous connection okay the reason is if you want to give it as an anonymous connection you can give why i am saying you can able to give the anonymous connection here we will be using a method called post here we will be using a method called post and here anyhow we are passing the login body so this is where it is going to consider the what is the username and the password along with this one extra thing that we need to do is content type we need to send it so this content type one type what is the content type application slash json this also we wanted to pass it to okay okay so once we have passed it if you remember the output of this the output of uh, web activity is going to be uh, give me one minute i'm going to show you what is the output of the web activity will look like is one second i'll show you yeah maybe if not what you can do okay so you can just anyhow the copy activity is going to fail i know but what you can also do is cut this okay go to my workspace create a new pipeline this is just for testing testing the web activity i'm creating a new pipeline so yeah just you what you can do you can just uh, to open up the canvas you can just add some activity you can remove this you can paste the web activity which you have copied now within this web activity you can see the login url the username and password content type i have put and i'm just saving and running because we don't have any debug options to show you what is the output of this we need to run only now let me show you the web activity output how it will look like when you are taking the token so now you can see the token is this meaning at the rate activity of web one dot output dot data dot token you need to use in order to pass this token to the copy activity now right click on this again now you can copy this you can go to your actual pipeline in this pipeline i'll be adding the same web activity okay you just have seen the output right data dot token you need to give so now this is working fine that particular web activity output i need to pass it to the uh, source data set side here in additional headers here i need to put it as a authorization key here what i need to give here i need to give the authorization let's give here authorization here you need to give the 
barrier okay add dynamic content here again you need to pass a dynamic content because the token should come dynamically space comma space comma so the activity output which activity output it is web activity output dot data dot token you need to use so that the token will be passed okay now we are good now come to the destination you can choose your lake house within this lake house you can go to files you can just browse you can see the output i don't want to control any file file names i want to create so let me explain to you overview overall so web activity which is going to log in okay with these settings log in with the username post method and content type application selection which gives the token i'll take that token okay then uh, for each is basically going to give the range of 1 to 10 meaning uh, id 1 2 3 4 till 10 um, numbers it is going to give those numbers i am passing to the source data set here you can say item and web activity token i am passing here at the additional headers once we passed everything to the source then i am um, copying that particular data into the destination sync lake house in the output folder okay now everything is fine i want to just run this save and run i just clicked now let's go to our monitoring hub here you can able to see so data ingestion underscore by page if you click on this you should be able to see her first our web activity is going to start okay i think it is yet to start just wait for a while okay let's go to this pipeline here let's go to yeah here you can able to see right when you run it monitoring hub is having small some issues so that is totally fine it will come up very soon in some time you can also see in the monitoring hub but if you see the token came 4d1c 4d1c and if you see any of the copy activity here you can see 4d1c 4d1c okay you are seeing everything right 4d1c 4d1c will be able to see all these things okay along with this you can also see the page ids here if you click on this come down this is a page id 2 if you click on this you can see this is a page id 3 if you click on this this is a, a page id what is the page id here page id 4 like this if you keep on going like this and click on this and you can able to see page id 1 is here next if you click on this you can able to see your page id 10 so as we have generated from page id 1 to 10 so total copy activities that it ran is 10 you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so 10 copy activities ran okay and web activity token we pass to the copy activity now we can able to see all the 10 different files in the output okay you can see 10 files we can able to see if you click on this you can able to see this is from the eighth page output if you click on this randomly you can see this is a seventh page output you can click on this you can see this is a fifth page output if you click on this you can see this is a fourth page output like this you can able to see the output of each page okay so i know it is little confusing because it is a lengthy lab so i request all of you to watch once again if you have any doubts please post your questions in the comment box i request all of you to subscribe my youtube channel and encourage me and support me thank you